Before it's an editor, every PDF editor is first a reader. So how does UPDF 2.0 handle reading and annotating your PDFs in 2025? Let's find out. UPDF remains the most affordable and functional PDF editor on the market. Just $70 for a one-time purchase or $40 a year. And that price gives you access across all your devices. A PDF editor doesn't get more budget friendly than that. And you can try it for free before purchasing it. UPDF is available on every major platform. With a UPDF account, you also get cloud storage to sync your documents across all your devices. In this review, we're focusing on the macOS version of the app, which should be similar to the Windows version. If you notice any differences though, do let us know. UPDF 2.0 is simple and intuitive to use. Its modern icons make the app feel fresh, unlike what we get with Foxit or Adobe Acrobat. If you're after a clean, modern looking PDF editor, this is it. All the essential tools are now on the floating toolbar. We're really enjoying the new look, especially since there isn't enough space between your tabs and the floating toolbar to make it distracting. Visually, this is the most beautiful PDF editor we've used so far. You can highlight, underline, and strike out your documents, and customizing the colors for each is simple. We're happy to see an opacity option in version 2.0. The highlighter colors are brilliant. I didn't want to replace any of them, but I did change the colors for strike out and underline to the ones that I prefer. That always brings a smile on my face. Colors should be customizable. The highlighter cursor though feels a bit too big. It's helpful for showing which tool you're using, but it can be a little overwhelming. It does grow on you, so maybe just take some getting used to. It actually works quite well, it's just too big. You can add comments to your document and to any annotations you make. For example, you might want to explain why you highlighted something. It's a useful feature for PDF annotation, especially since the app also keeps track of them. UPDF handles this smoothly with the date and time for every annotation and comment, along with the author who made it, which in this case will be you, of course, since UPDF doesn't support collaboration. Comments in UPDF 2.0 are still very basic without any text formatting, so we hope to get that in the future. They come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. The large size works best for annotations because the pop-up text is easier to read when it's bigger. You can change the color of your comments and the opacity of the comment icon. Not sure the opacity option makes sense, but if it does to you, you'll be happy to have it. Text boxes and callouts let you add visible text directly to your document. When you don't want to hover over comments, these tools display your notes right on the page, so there won't be any more extra steps for you to see your notes. Text formatting is fairly basic, with options for font type, size, color, and opacity. You won't be able to make the text bold, italic, or underlined, unless the font somehow includes those styles. Text boxes and callouts have seen some nice improvements in UPDF 2.0, in addition to setting the border and background color, you can now adjust border thickness and choose different border styles. Callouts also support different pointers now. All of this is done in a way that feels intuitive and minimalist, making the app a pleasure to use. It's always exciting when developers deliver on user requests, and that's exactly what UPDF has done with this update. 
If you're not a fan of text boxes, you can add text directly on the page. Just keep in mind it might blend in with the original document unless you make it stand out somehow. Maybe using font size, font color, you know, that sort of thing. I've had an odd relationship with shapes. I really use them in my notes and even less when annotating PDFs. Still, having the option is always a plus and the shapes in your PDF are genuinely fun to explore. You can draw almost any shape you can think of, including irregular ones. The app gives you control over border thickness, fill color, and border style. Fill color is opaque, so it's not ideal to use over text. The pen tool, on the other hand, is much more useful on a tablet than a computer. It feels a lot smoother in your PDF 2.0, so we're happy to see that they've really improved this and it should work great on an iPad. Your PDF 2.0 offers four theme colors that apply only to your user interface. Dark and starry blue kind of look the same. You also get a PDF background color setting, which changes both the look of your document and the background of the app. Then there's an option to only change the background alone. This is the most customization we've seen for reading documents in a PDF reader in 2025. When it comes to viewing options, UPDF keeps things fairly minimal. It supports a two-page view with either paged or continuous vertical scrolling. I don't mind the lack of horizontal scrolling, but if that's something you prefer, you might find it limiting. The zoom range, however, is impressive. Several viewing features are missing in your PDF 2.0. There are no page display tools like rollers or grids, and no reading aids like a magnifier, for example. Hopefully, those features will be added in the future. The simple steps in your PDF are a bit too basic. You can't change their color or rotate them. Custom stamps offer more flexibility with options for adding a date, time, and any color you choose. You can also import PDFs or images and save them as stamps in the app. Still, these aren't the most exciting stamps for reading PDFs. In your PDF, you can measure distance, parameter, and area directly within your document. All the tools are easy to use and it's great that you can adjust your measurements afterward if you make a mistake. Measurements can be as precise as 0.001 and you can measure in points, millimeters, centimeters, and inches. There's also a unit labeled P, possibly pixels or pikers, it might be helpful if the app wrote out the full names. It would just be easier, we wouldn't be guessing. But if you know what the P stands for, please do let us know. You can also set a custom ratio for your measurements, which is especially useful for scaled drawings. There's also an option for orthographic lines. Could be orthographic lines, not sure. Orthopedic surgery, hmm, ortho sounds about right. I'm not really sure what they are. Overall, UPDF 2.0 has one of the best measuring tools in any PDF editor. You can create up to 6 local signatures for signing your documents and 10 cloud-based ones. This can be photos, handwritten or typed. Once edited, you can resize the signature, adjust its opacity, and even flip it. Signatures are pretty straightforward and easy to use. The app allows you to attach any file to your document and you can choose from four different icons to represent the attachment. The paper clip is the most familiar, 
and probably the most practical since it's the standard across most apps. As with most elements in UPDF 2.0, the attachment icon can be customized with color and opacity. If there's one thing the developers really focused on in this version, it's opacity, applied even to items that probably don't need it, like the attachment icon. UPDF 2.0 automatically recognizes the table of contents in your document, if one exists. It also works as a bookmarking tool, letting you edit, add, or remove items from it. Navigating through pages is smooth and effortless. For PDF reading, I would pick UPDF 2.0 over Foxit Reader and Adobe Acrobat any day. It has a much better user interface, lighter, more responsive, and far more pleasant to use. UPDF keeps things minimalist, offering just the right balance of features and customization. It's the best example of what a modern PDF editor should be. What do you guys think about UPDF 2.0? Is it an app you're considering using? Do let us know. Until next time, fantastic human, stay fantastic.